What's up guys, Sarah Winstead here, bikini athlete and coach for Pro Physique. And today I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit more about my own personal breast augmentation experience and give you guys a little bit more tips, some tricks and answer some questions as well. And so we're coming right up on a year um, out of my breast augmentation and the girls are doing great. Still very, very, very happy with them. One of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. And my why behind this, just to kind of dive into you know why I did this and everything um, my why was not for competing you don't need them to compete um, but for me it was more about having more confidence in my overall shape in my body and you know I've always wanted boobs like I've always been like flat chested ever since like elementary middle high school college they never really showed up honestly and so it was really th I would like stuff my bras it was a thing that just really didn't give me a lot of confidence in myself was that kind of you know overall piece of my femininity is what I was looking for and so I got them haven't never been happier with them and definitely have more confidence with them embracing my overall femininity they add a lot to my overall shape and every time I walk around I'm just like yeah feel good. I feel good. And my goal with them was for them to look decently natural, honestly, um, in my clothes, in sports bras and things like that as well. Um, and just to give you guys my quick kind of stats, I did get 150 cc's under the muscle with a mid profile. Um, and so had a great experience with my doctor. I'll put his information below if you guys are in the Atlanta area looking for a plastic surgeon, loved him. And that's one of the reasons why I chose him. Um, after doing extensive amounts of research, I talked to friends. I talked to other people that I know that I'd gotten them who live in Atlanta. I'd be like, who did you use? Did you enjoy it? What did you like or what did you not like about the experience? And then I started calling different offices in Atlanta, setting up some consultations, you know, meeting with them, seeing what the vibe is. And I just got a really good feeling from his office from top to bottom from the moment I walked in because it's a very invasive surgery. They made me feel really comfortable and confident in myself and my decision to do this. Um, very positive experience. They helped me. They had I me mean, try on the implants during the initial consultation with a bra. We did pictures like front and side profile to see kind of what it was without it, what it was with it. And it really helped me just make the decision process a whole lot easier and be more comfortable in some kind of kind of experience and so I definitely encourage you guys to do your research have multiple consultations with different doctors in the area because every person has different styles different ways that they do this and things like that as well so definitely take your time don't rush it and do your research I also recommend another tip here for competitors specifically be deep into your improvement season don't just walk off stage and two weeks later get boobs because they need some body fat to work with. They need some shape to work with to add to it. It'll also make the recovery process a little bit easier as well for you if you're just not straight into reverse post comp and things like that. So definitely recommend if you're thinking about it, plan for it in your improvement season when you have some good amount of food to work with. When you're not food focused, you can take the time away to recover and everything like that. It's all about having a plan. And I was very grateful of the fact that I had had a really good plan going into this from surgery to recovery and training, etc. And I'll kind of dive deeper into that as well. So research, I went over my stats here. Surgery day itself, um, my surgery was at 11 a.m. in the morning. I couldn't eat, I think it was like 12 hours prior. So I had my last meal for the day later. I ate at like eight o'clock at night. I had like chicken teriyaki, a bunch of like stir fry vegetables and some rice. That way I would be very full. That way I wouldn't wake up hungry um, and everything. So, cause that's really, really, really important. I didn't want my blood sugar to drop or anything like that. So I had a plan. And also, I highly recommend you getting somebody to stay with you if you live alone or having a friend come over um, and you know just be with you for the first couple of days because you're gonna be out of it from the anesthesia, from the medications, you're gonna be tired. It's, a, it's a, an invasive surgery, it's a, an invasive procedure. And so I highly recommend having someone to be with you for at least the first three to four days until you come out of the haze, until you feel better because you can't drive. <laughs> you don't really feel like getting out of bed. And when you do get out of bed you use your chest muscles to sit up I, I literally had to have my husband help me get out of bed to go to the bathroom 
So it's a thing, at least for the first, like I said, few days until you feel better, until the swelling and the pain starts to subside and things like that. And with that, I prep some meals as well for the first few days just to have stuff on hand. So I could tell my husband, okay, go run downstairs, heat up this, you know, bowl of chili that I made and then bring it back up to me and so I can eat it. You know, obviously I moved around the house after the first couple of days, but for the first like day or so, I was pretty much in bed, just lying around, resting, recovering, napping. I read a book a bunch, watched a few movies. I, you know, got up obviously and walked around the house a couple of times just to move around. But, you know, it, it was definitely, definitely a, 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 you know, a tough recovery, but not too tough of a recovery, but it was there. Like it, I had to make sure I take my meds on time. Time. Um, the pain really only got bad I say like the second day because that's obviously when the anesthesia and everything like that starts to wear off and if I was like a little bit late on my pain meds I definitely started to feel it coming and it wasn't like pain like unbearable it was more so like soreness and tightness in my chest I never had difficulty breathing which was good um, but it was definitely there it was definitely present but after the first like three or four days the pain definitely starts to subside and it's more like general muscle soreness and so so with that, I was able to come off like the heavy pain meds pretty quickly and just do the antibiotics like they prescribe. So caveat here, do everything that your doctor says. Honestly, follow it to a T. And if you have a question, ask them. I asked a ton of questions, especially being a bodybuilder, about the recovery process, about the surgery process. That way I can make a plan going into it and feel really comfortable with how the surgery went and then post-surgery as well. Surgery day, because my time was 11 a.m., I pre-planned and brought a protein shake with me for after surgery, and then I brought me a couple of options as far as just like carb sources. I ended up eating the protein shake, and then I ate an English muffin after surgery because I was like, okay, I want something in my stomach. And then, you know, I just kind of relied on my meals. I didn't drop my calories just because I wasn't as active. Your body still needs, especially the protein, for recovery purposes. There were a few days where I was a little bit like not really feeling food, so I wasn't like pushing food, but I'm not intentionally restricting my food during the recovery process. Do not do that. Your body needs it. But there's also going to be some things during the first few days that you just can't do. Like I had to have my husband open and unscrew my blender bottle because I couldn't do it because you use your chest muscles for that. I mentioned earlier about getting out of bed, like sitting up in a bed. You use your muscles. Um, opening like car doors, opening heavier doors, make sure you get someone else to do that because you're pulling, like you're activating your chest muscles when you're doing that. So just be very ginger with yourself, be very cognizant of it. And obviously if you feel something, stop. Like I tried to shimmy out my air fryer, I think like day four, and I was just like, ooh, okay, um, we're not doing that. It felt really, really, really weird. <laughs> We're not doing that again. So I asked my husband, don't be afraid to ask for help. That's what they're there for, at least for the first few days. Um, and then your body really starts to come out of it. You remember things again, like, and, every, and everything starts to kind of flow a little bit better as well. Um, and then I had my first follow-up about four or five days afterwards. They said they were looking great. The swelling does start to come down. Do not be afraid about, you know, the scale going up or anything like that. It's normal. It's a traumatic process. It's water retention. It happens. But don't, like, you know, start restricting your food or anything. Don't do that. Um, but let's get into more about the recovery process. So my personal recovery plan from my doctor was four weeks, no weight training. And I was like, okay, cool. I was definitely nervous. I was definitely anxious. And I was like, oh gosh, am I going to lose all my muscle mass? Am I never going to, am I going to lose my butt and my arms? What, what is going to happen here? Cause I was just like four weeks out of the gym. I've never done that before. And so we actually made a plan with my coach, Paul, to really push myself training wise, lots of drop sets, lots of fatigue, lots of volume, lots of heavy training in the couple of weeks prior to surgery. That way my body was really ready for a break. I loved that plan. It's something that I definitely encourage you guys to do because your body does need a break every now and again. We That's why we have deloads in training. But taking that rest time was very, very good for me and my body. Your body needs needs it. You're not going to lose all your muscle mass. Yes, you may lose some absolute strength. You may lose a little bit. It may take a little bit longer for like upper body to come back, but you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. And your body's going to enjoy the rest. You're going to come back even better later on down the road. And then you're not going to have any complications from surgery if you go back too early. So follow your recovery plan. 
So during that time frame, I worked out, I work out first thing in the morning. And so I just slept in a little bit later. So I didn't really like miss my training sessions as much. And honestly, that first week, I really didn't feel like doing anything anyways, because you're just so tired, you're sore. And when I did feel like doing something around like day four to five, I just took a walk. I just walked outside. There was a greenway close to our townhouse where we lived. I got some sunshine. I got some steps. And my doctor said that that was fine as long as it wasn't a strenuous run, jog, or a strenuous walk to where my heart rate got above a certain percentile. And so that was really nice to be able to do something to keep my brain moving and to feel accomplished for the day from like a mindset perspective too. But I knew and I told myself and I told my husband, he held me accountable too. There were days where I was just like, oh, I missed the gym, you know? And he was like, okay, cool. Go take a walk. Go do something for yourself. Go read a book. Go help yourself do something that's going to help you feel accomplished for the day and get that off your brain because the gym is always going to be there you need to take the time for yourself to actively recover and then you can get back to it full bore after you're cleared and everything like that so around week three is when i definitely started missing the gym but i was feeling a whole lot better i was feeling like okay maybe I could do like lower body. And so I asked my doctor, I called them and asked them, I was like, look, I'm not trying to do weights, but I have a booty band at my house. And I was wondering if I could do like a warm up. Like we're talking 20 minutes, three to three sets of like 15 or 20 of like glute bridges, lateral band walks, uh, kickbacks. You know, can I do something like that that's not gonna put any pressure on my chest and I'm not moving my upper body, I'm not holding anything. So I asked them, I detailed out everything in the plan that I've, what I wanted to do for like three days. I just wanted to give me some body to do something. And he said, sure, but if you feel anything, obviously stop. So again, ask your doctor the questions, run things by them. Everyone's personal recovery plan is different with what they recommend, but follow the doctor's orders. But again, if you have a question, ask. So that's what I did between weeks three and week four, just to get my body ready, my body kind of primed to go back into the gym. Week four, went back into the gym and we had, Paul and I had more of a deload strategy plan of just like half the sets, half the reps, half the weight, and making sure we're getting good form back in there, making sure we're using more so dumbbells than barbells, because if you think about it, you gotta pull and push those um, plates on and off the, dumb, the barbell. And so that again, it's chest movement. And so I didn't do that. I used more so dumbbells and machines for that first two weeks leading up to when my sixth week when I was cleared for upper body training. So then again, having a plan, making a plan. If you do have a coach, this is a great time to ask them questions about how do you get through this process and stay safe, still recover, and put yourself in an optimal position when you can actually get back to the gym. So that worked out really well for us for two weeks, got back in the gym, didn't go balls to the wall or anything like that, trusted my body. It was weird, honestly, it was very weird getting back into it, even just holding certain things. Like I could feel the chest muscle activating, but not in a bad way. You'll definitely know the difference between activating and then there's difference between that and like pain. Obviously, if you have pain, talk to your doctor. Um, but we did that for the two weeks and then at six weeks, I had my final you know, follow-up appointment and um, then I had one at three months as well but then at that you know six week mark he said okay you're cleared for upper body training but i would stay away from chest specific exercises for another two weeks if you do them and i'm like well i don't bench press i don't do incline bench press i don't really do chest flies or anything like that it's not really a thing for my goals for bikini or anything like that so i was like okay cool so we focus more on back some shoulders i did some mobility stuff as far as shoulders go testing out what things felt good, what things did not feel good. And obviously, if I felt like twinges here and there, then I was like, okay, maybe not yet. We'll wait a few more days. Um, but just being aware of your body is a huge part of this process. And as a bodybuilder, as an athlete, we're very aware of our bodies. And I think it really, really helped us, you know, during the recovery process and everything. So did I lose some strength? Yes, it took me about four weeks to get back as far as like lower body is concerned to get back to my normal weights and it took me about six weeks for my upper body to get back to where I really wanted it to be as well. And I still feel them on some exercises, particularly things like pull-ups and lat pull-downs because you think about it, that initial motion coming down, you activate a little bit of your chest muscles. So just be careful, be cognizant, listen to your body, just be aware of what you're doing in your recovery process, in your training process. Don't try to rush it. It's all gonna be there. You're gonna be absolutely fine. But like I said, feel that time 
in your initial process with things that you enjoy, other hobbies, other activities away from the gym. It's a great time to work on your mindset and just, you know, have some fun, honestly, and enjoy other things. I got a ton of walks in, a ton of steps in, but it wasn't strenuous. And so it really helped me mentally during that time frame when I couldn't train. So that just about does it for me from a um, breast augmentation experience standpoint. Um, but if you like this video, click the like, click subscribe, comment below about your own experience or if any of these tips are particularly helpful for you, as well as any questions that you have. I'm always happy and open book to answer any kind of questions about, you know, ladies, if you're thinking about this kind of breast augmentation experiences, I hope this video was good for you, as well as competitors and things like that too. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you and I will definitely catch you guys in the next video.